Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late, out of date, raw review. I'm tired as fuck there, but whatever. Um, very bad show. I know it's the 4th of July episode and it's a holiday raw, but still they should have put fucking effort in this show there. If they're going to do a show and not put effort in it, just fucking pre-tape it, do a best of episode or something if they're not going to try, you know what I mean? Why not just fucking pre-tape it or something? But if they're gonna go live, why not do a big show, you know? Why does it have to be garbage, unfunny comedy every fucking holiday Raw special or whatever? Why not do a big match, put the world title on the line, do something? Do something, man. This was fucking terrible. And it has nothing to do with the 4th of July. I'm not anti-American, nothing like this there, you understand? But WWE are just fucking cheating now, <laughs> man. The way that they did this was like beyond fucking lame. It starts off with a food fight. You know, very original that's never been done in movies and TV shows there. Let's have a food fight. Genius writers, a big giant creative team. The most original thing they can come up with is a food fight. This was meant to be funny, but it wasn't. It's that WWE style unfunny comedy fucking garbage. Kevin Owens hid under the table to escape the food fight. He gets up, he gets a cake in the face, you know what I mean? <laughs> this was, it was meant to be funny, but it was so fucking lame and bad, man. Like Kevin Owens, obviously fake, exaggerated rage there for this cake in the face and they just did a cake in the face like two months ago the new day I think they threw a cake in Heath Slater's face or something unoriginal food fight an unoriginal cake in the face routine from the 19 fucking 30s there you know where's the originality Oh, it's 4th of July, it's cake in the face and fucking food fights. You might as well rehash fucking stuff from the Three Stooges or something, you know. How about uh, let's redo something from the 1920s or something. Some guy's gonna look in the exhaust pipe, he's gonna get the fumes in the face there. Any other original comedy bits from the 1800s that they want to rehash there and try to make it look like it's comedy or original? Fucking losers. Just a bunch of fucking garbage, man. First match, Rusev defeats Titus O'Neil. You know, why not give it to him? Let him win the belt, fucking. Then he can lose it at the pay-per-view or something. Why even do this? You know, I found it funny a bit there that Rusev beat O'Neal. It's America. The American gets beat. I, I thought it was a bit funny, but... They didn't even show three quarters of the match. Apparently the match lasted five minutes. Most of it happened during the commercial. And we saw about two minutes of the match on TV. Here's Titus O'Neil, father of the year. We just suspended him for nothing there. He gets beat up on Father's Day. Father of the year, this... This should mean something to Titus O'Neil. Let's have him get beat on Father's Day. Let's put him in the fucking Jim Duggan USA role. He gets beat in two minutes on television. What's the point? 
Oh yeah, it's true, he's black. Fuck, he can't even get a US title. What's wrong with this company? Just don't do the match. If you're gonna fucking do this to the guy, just... Just don't, fucking. He's... They're like, oh, this is Rusev sending a message to his future opponents or something. Not that I really care about Titus O'Neil, but they're just fucking burying this guy for no reason. The guy didn't do anything wrong there, fuck. Second match, Enzo and Big Cass defeat the social outcasts in like a minute. You know, fuck all to say here. Oh, it's a minute match. It was good. Oh, it progressed the story. It was good. This is just garbage. Pointless, pathetic garbage. How does this entertain the crowd there uh, on July 4th or whatever? The fans sacrifice their fucking, their holiday. Fuck, they sacrifice their Independence Day to go to the fucking arena. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's a holiday raw. It matters to the people that pay a hundred bucks to go watch this shit at the arena. It matters to them. And all they got was a big pile of fucking red, white, and blue fucking shit. That's what they had. A big pile of red, white, and blue fucking shit. That's what this show was there. Then you had Charlotte and Dana Brooke. Sasha Banks came out. And this was bad acting, including Sasha Banks there. It was very bad, very lame, very cheap. Sasha Banks, she starts to give a description of what a boss is. And this might have been the corniest crap I've seen this week there. Oh, a boss is someone who keep it real. A boss is somebody who ain't afraid to throw down. A boss is somebody at work who tells you what to do there. A boss isn't some kind of hip-hop lingo bullshit there. A boss is somebody at your job that gives you shit when you're late and gives you shit. <laughs> you know, that's a boss. That's what a boss is. It's not about keeping it real, keeping it hundred and acting like little Wayne there. That's not what a boss is there, dog. A boss is your employer who tells you what to do. You know, if she wants to call herself a boss <laughs> and talk like it's something else, then it just looks fucking stupid. A boss is somebody with a nice hairstyle. A boss is somebody that can get jiggy with it. You know, it just looks stupid and fake. Jesus Christ, man. Number three, Sasha Banks. I'm officially not giving a shit about her anymore after this cornball performance. We haven't seen her in six months there. She wrestled well in NXT. Who the fuck cares? Everybody fucking wrestles well in NXT. If she's going to be corny and lame and a bad actor like this, then fuck her. I don't care. I'm done. I'm done with this phony, baloney, indie bullshit there. Third match, Dean Ambrose defeated The Miz. This was champion against champion. It's supposed to be a big deal, boy, in the old days. Hogan, world champ, against the ultimate warrior, intercontinental champion. And you look at this now, they, they both look like they're going to compete in, in this upcoming cruiserweight tournament. <laughs> Fucking Miz looks like he's twice the size of Dean Ambrose, for God's sake. All you had here is two, three roll-ups and the finisher. That That's pretty much what you got. I think Miz hit, hit him with a drop kick or something like this. <laughs> One of the cheapest champ against champ matches that I've ever seen. The least impressive that I've ever seen in my life there. Fourth match, Seth Rollins defeated Dolph Ziggler. This match was okay. It was an okay match. This match, they've done it 
multiple times there, so it's nothing to really be impressed about. A couple of near falls, that's the way it is now. You have a couple kickouts in the match. Oh, this is great! You have to bow down to this there. A couple of kickouts. Ziggler nails him with a big DDT. Seth Rollins doesn't even sell it. He just gets up, gives him a pedigree, and it's finished. You know, it wasn't that great there. Uh, you know, you know, sell a big move and just nail him with your finisher. Is this Ring of Honor that I'm watching or what there? It was okay, but not that great there. And then after this, Dean Ambrose. What happens? Dean Ambrose first... He slaps Seth Rollins on the ass for some reason because he's crazy. I'm so nuts, I'm going to grab your ass. It's because it's I'm crazy. Let me grab another man's testicles. I'm fucking wild there, buddy. I'm wild. I'm tough. Let me grab your anus. Um, he go. Ambrose goes to sit at the announce table. When Ambrose was leaving, Seth Rollins was coming out for his match. Ambrose grabs his ass, whatever, you know. Then he goes to sit at the Spanish announce table. And they present this like it's a big deal. Oh my god, he's crazy! He's going at the Spanish announce table. Holy fuck, this guy is so wild, man. He's fucking out there. He's a lunatic, man. Sitting at the Spanish announce table. How fucking crazy and impressive is this shit? You know? And so after the match, Seth Rollins stands on the table. He starts talking about Roman Reigns' suspension, and damn it, boy, Dean Ambrose has had enough of this. How dare you criticize Roman Reigns? He got busted for drugs. He's the great guy in this situation. How dare you talk about him for taking drugs there when he's a big star? He's, he's taking drugs or whatever. You're the bad guy, Rollins, for, for talking about this. And Roman Reigns is the hero for taking drugs, buddy. Get it right. So Ambrose starts to punch uh, Rollins on the table. He hits him with dirty deeds on the announce table. But let's keep it real here a little bit. Okay, I, and I know what it's like. As soon as somebody takes a move on the table, it's instantly five stars. You get hit, you, you, somebody lobs themselves onto a table that's five star material, it's hardcore. You know what I'm saying? But in reality, if you look at the move, the table didn't break which completely fucks up the visual, it fucks up the impact of what what happens there. Plus the move looked cheap, it looked phony looking. Even though a move was performed on the table, it still looked cheap. It, it looked cheap because the table didn't break. And it looked phony when he landed on the table. Probably the weakest looking table move I've ever seen. I'm telling you right now. Vicky Guerrero came out and there was big spoilers of this. People were talking like it was a big thing. Vicky talks for about 45 seconds and security takes her away. And then she's in the back. Dolph Ziggler, please tell them you know me. Because the security guards don't know Vicky. This is how WWE presents it. Like if Vicky Guerrero snuck into the building somehow without permission. Like this would actually happen. They present it like, like this. Either the security guards are brain dead idiots who don't know who the talent is, or they're presenting it like if Vicky somehow snuck into the fucking building, like, 
Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible or something. Somehow she snuck in there without getting noticed. She was backstage with the wrestlers without getting noticed. And then she somehow got control of the microphone. And, you know, so she's in the back. Dolph, please tell them you know me, Vicky. And then Dolph, I, I've never seen her in my life. I never, I don't know who she is. And again, this is as unoriginal as it gets. How many times have we seen this in TV shows, movies? No, no, I've never heard of this guy. <laughs> you understand? And this is the originality they come up with there. Some kind of, oh, I've never seen this guy before. <laughs> Another joke from the 19 fucking 20s. Uh, fucking food fights, cakes in the face. It's all unoriginal bullshit. Is this the best that the writing team can come up with? Let's bring back Vicky. We'll let her talk for 30 seconds there. And then we're going to do a joke from the 1920s there. Is this really the best that these fucking idiots can come up with? Oh, you're not backstage, buddy. You know, is, is that what it is backstage? Just people ripping off material from, from movies, trying to pass it off as their own, and they do it in an unfunny fashion? Is this what happens backstage along with the steroid and coke use or whatever? I'm so fucking impressed with this wrestling industry there. Fifth match, the Golden Troop defeat the VOD villains in like 30, 40 seconds. You know, what's the point of this? You know, is, it, is the point to simply bury the VOD villains? Because the point doesn't seem to be to impress the people at the arena. People on the internet, doesn't matter. Fourth of July, I don't care. But the people in the arena, front row, that pay a thousand bucks there. This is what they get? A 30-second match from a fucking goofball job routine? Defeating the new talent in 30 seconds. The new era. Let's bury this new talent. Is that what this new era is about? Two guys in their 40s beating the, the new fucking talent in 30 seconds. And Golden Truth isn't even funny. It's not good. It's, you know? What is this, man? Then you had John Cena cutting a depressive promo. You know, we were expecting some pandering from Cena, some military talk. I guess WWE wanted to swerve us from this, but it, what we got was a, a serious, robotic-sounding Cena. He sounded robotic and phony, just very robotic. He's telling the fans, oh, you guys don't look like you're into it. Uh, you seem depressed. Yeah, because they paid money. For a show that's complete fucking garbage. They sacrificed their 4th of July. I'm so loyal to the wrestling business. I'll sacrifice my 4th of July. And give you my money to go see your show. And all we get is fucked in the ass with jobber 30 second matches. That's why the people in the arena aren't into it. John. That's why maybe. Just a chance there. Cena's cutting this fucking garbage robotic promo there. AJ Styles comes out. He's talking about the shovel again. Basically, it's like they did last month, except much, much, much cheaper. They do the exact same beat down, the punch to the face, exact same thing. Same fucking thing. But then Enzo and Cass come out to save Cena. What? Enzo and Cass? What the fuck do they have to do with Cena? How are they related to this 
story in any fucking way. <laughs> any way. You know? It, fuck, man. And apparently this is the match. They're not doing Cena and AJ part two. They're having a six-man tag with Enzo and Cass randomly thrown into the Cena feud. Why? What is this? My God. Very bad. You know, it's the same fucking thing that they've done before, except 20 times worse. And it's recycled, so... How are you supposed to like something you've already seen before? Identical, but they make it much worse. How are you supposed to like this? It, it, you can't. It, it can't be done. Sixth match, Becky Lynch defeats Summer Rae there. Another garbage match with fuck all, no meaning, no nothing. Summer Rae, she's been in WWE for a while. She botched a common suplex. Not a fucking complicated suplex. The common suplex. She botched this and Becky Lynch landed right on her fucking head, man. Lucky she didn't get paralyzed. You botch a fucking suplex. A one minute match. There's a huge fucking botch. A huge fucking pot, you know? This is what you give to your audience that fucking sacrifice their fucking holiday to watch your fucking pathetic show. This is what you give to the people. Oh my God. Then New Day comes out there. They're talking about the Wyatt family. Um... The little one there, I don't remember his name for some reason. Consequences Creed from TNA. Fuck him, I forgot his name. Fuck him. He walks away, he's, he's depressed, he's upset because they're not taking the Wyatt seriously. And he just walks away. There's your big skit there. Very fucking hilarious, very entertaining there, very cheap. Is what it is. Very fucking cheap. And then the main event. Team USA. Defeated the worldwide. Or the national. Team world basically. It was Team USA against Team World. They gave it some kind of other name there. It, it ended with Big Show and Zack Ryder winning for Team USA, you know. It's Zack Ryder. It's a big star there. Zack Ryder fighting for your country. I understand people are American. Americans, they like this, this Americana bullshit or whatever. They're, I'm not offending you guys there, but like... God... It was just bad, man. It was fucking bad. Okay, so many problems with this match. Zack Ryder winning, It's it, and it's the big show in this match. We haven't seen this guy in like a year. It's big show giving a military style pep talk in the back. Kane was on the team with his mask. He's there last week, no mask. This week, he has a mask. There's no explanation for this. You got the Dudley boys on Team USA. They're a heel team. They're on Team USA. And what bothered me the most was Team World. You know what I mean? On, on that team, you had Sami Zayn, uh, Cesaro, the Lucha Dragons, four faces. You take four faces, most importantly, Cesaro and Sami Zayn. Two faces with potential. You take those guys, you make them fight against Team USA on the 4th of July. How fucking stupid is that? Why would you make your faces look, you know, take faces and put them in an awkward, fucking awful position like this? 
you know, Cesaro is building a fan base and shit. They're calling it the Cesaro section. Oh, it's only a, a, a section that likes him. Even though the entire crowd cheers for him everywhere he goes there. It's only a little section that likes him. But to show you how shitty this is, Cesaro, great wrestler, great talent, the fans love him. But because they put him in this garbage position, he comes out to silence and boos here and there from the crowd. You know what I mean? This is cheap, man. Boo! I don't like you today because you're not born in America! You know, fuck is this? Is this the message you want to give to people there? Boo talented wrestlers because they're not American. Is this really the, the best they can come up with? It seems that WWE thinks that the 4th of July is about burying people from other countries. It shouldn't be about that. Celebrate your Independence Day. Talk about how great America is. But why do they have to bury the talent from other countries? Is there a point to this? What's the point? How does this help Cesaro? One of your best wrestlers on the roster, you put him in a dumb fucking situation like this, where he gets treated like shit from the crowd because he's not American. You know, it comes off pretty goddamn petty and racist a little bit there. You understand? You know, why would the crowd boo someone for being from a different country? You know, usually we call that racism, but because it happens in wrestling, it's cool. It's cool to hate a wrestler for no reason because he's from a different country. And think of it reality-wise, how petty does this look? They book themselves to beat up foreigners in a fake fight to give satisfaction to American wrestling fans. Yeah! We just beat up a group of foreigners in a fake fight. This is just dumb, man. It's dumb. Have your 4th of July. Celebrate. You know, we had Canada Day three days before you guys. The, the Prime Minister didn't talk to us about how cheap the other countries were. They didn't have a match at the Parliament where Canadians fucking beat down fucking Chinese people or something. We're better than Chinese, eh? You don't see this on Canada Day there, but in, in the mind of WWE, it's the 4th of July, let's bury the other countries so we can satisfy our egos there. What a pile of fucking bullshit. Cheap. Very fucking cheap, man. You know, I know it's a holiday show, but it doesn't have to be that goddamn terrible. If you're gonna have the wrestlers miss their fucking vacation with their family there, they're at the arena. The wrestlers are there at the arena. Why not have them put on a good fucking show? Put on a good show for the people that paid big money to go watch you. Instead, the crowd, even when Team USA won, the crowd was dead. You can tell that this crowd was fucking dead and beyond fucking bored. This was just bad. Just bad. You know, burying Cesaro because he's from another country there. Fuck off, man, <laughs> you know. They didn't bury him, but you know what I mean. It makes them look bad. These are faces with potential great wrestlers. To put them in, in a situation where they get booed by fucking brain-dead retards in the crowd. Booed because they're not American there. That's fucking petty. Low class and petty, you pieces of shit motherfuckers. Fuck, I hate this racist garbage. Fucking hate this bullshit. Until next time, peace.